The Rubo Workbench, designed by Andre Rubo in the 1700s, regarded by many as the ultimate work holding solution for the shop. It's been hands down the best tool I've added, but ever since I built mine, I've had this burning question I can't shake. Was the pinnacle of modern workbenches really designed 300 years ago? All right, all right, all right, all right. Maybe not. So a while back, we had a windstorm out here and we hired a guy to come out and he said, I've got this stack of wood at my shop, about a thousand board feet, came from a tree that he estimated to be 500 years old. It had been down for 75 years before he cut it 10 to 15 years ago. It's all quarter sawn Douglas fir. And we figure based on his calculations that this tree germinated in 1432. When choosing lumber for a workbench, the first and most important thing is to choose something with a lot of provenance, said no one ever. It's clear, it's straight, it's even more dense than walnut. I gotta admit, softwood wouldn't be my first choice for a workbench, but this, this will do just fine. Now the first thing I need to do is to take all of these two inch thick boards and turn them into a huge pile of half inch thick boards. Snap. The extra resin content produces a lot of frictional heat, resulting in a lot of snap blades. All right, here's where things start to get fun. Making a wedge in wood, a taper, that is not difficult. But what if that taper mirrors itself, starts out fat, goes to thin in the center, and then comes back out to fat again? On scale, we could certainly do that with the bandsaw, but if that taper is just an eighth of an inch over nine feet, it gets quite a bit trickier. So check this out. This is a teeter-totter, so in the center, it's got the low point and then the wings. So out here at the end, it makes a board that is three eighths of an inch thick. The center of the board cuts thicknesses to just less than a quarter. Cool, huh? Now this is pretty subtle over one lamination, but as you get 32 together, The base of this bench is going to be curved, and in order to make that curve, I need something to form the wood around. Instead of wasting eight sheets of MTF building a solid form, I'm going to try something a little different on this one by using a reference board as clamping blocks as sort of a skeleton form. I picked this technique up from how curved stairs are formed on site. All right, the dry fit is looking good. As Jimmy DeRest always says, you go to school on the first one. So I think the primary reason this works really well is because the laminations are thick enough that they don't fold over when they get wet, or in other words, they're kind of self-supportive. I am still using a couple call layers on the outside to sort of buffer that edge. The old added shellac sticks to everything and everything sticks to shellac is always true except when it isn't. To mitigate glue squeeze out, I just coated the form in shellac. Okay, glad that's over. The scale of this project is admittedly beyond my comfort zone, but that just seems to be a masochistic tendency of mine. Sometimes I wish there was a playbook for how to do all this. It's one thing to know how to build the thing, but a whole other animal for how to sell it. To those who, like me, love working with their hands and being creative, let me introduce this week's sponsor, the Business in a Box Playbooks. Whether you're looking to go full-time woodworker or just a hobbyist looking for a side gig that pays for itself, literally the book on how to run a woodworking business, a no details spared reference for everything from proportions, joinery, and wood selection to SEO, invoicing, and taxes. Everything they don't teach about woodworking in business school and everything business they don't teach at furniture school. Sprinkle Business Course wants to teach you how to scale. Eliminate the learning curve, saving thousands of dollars and hours on preventable mistakes. To learn how to run your own profitable custom furniture business, visit the link in the description to save 25% off the entire 100 step-by-step -step digital playbooks course, including SketchUp models and access to a private discussions group. Thanks to Sprinkle Business Playbooks for sponsoring this build. Now let's get back to it.
There's two types of bench tops, split top and a solid top. When I was first making my bench, somebody told me that split tops are for lazy people, but honestly, I think they're made the same. One just glued together at the end. I chose split top because split top Sawyer sounds cool. I've left the front and the back boards off, and then we've got sort of the two halves in order to get those joined to the arches. Once we get these thickness, I think I'll set those aside and we'll get back to the arches and figure out how the heck those are gonna put together. A design element that I really wanted to emphasize on this project was the fact that the arches nest into the top, seemingly intersect with those massive slabs. And the application and ability of the Pano router just never ceases to amaze me. I actually had the opportunity to travel down to the International Woodworking Festival last month with Mac and John Henry with Panel Router. And it was amazing seeing the scale of this industry. Such a cool opportunity. And Mac's also provided a discount link to the Panel Router should you be interested in it after you see all the cool stuff that it does in this video. And now you can see why I left those front boards off the slab and the top. The nesting of the curves of the slab is a bit of an illusion. Before we can get the arches glued to the top, a few things have to happen. The shelf needs to be assembled and ready to glue up at the same time, as well as the back side of the main vise called the leg vise. The front side of that vise is called the chop and that's what I'm gluing up here. In order to get proportions right and avoid guessing the curves that I made and designed in CAD, I just printed off some templates to transfer over. Now, it's important to get all the joinery done while everything's still square, and we'll get back to the shaping of the curves after the tenons are cut on these supports and after I've drilled the holes for the retention mechanism and hardware of the leg vise. Some stretchers will support the split top between the legs. And once again, I'm just cutting those tenons on the panel router. And since it was a little awkward to get the legs up into that position, I decided just to make a template to route out the mortises. During a dry fit of the top to the face board, I noticed that that curve was sort of getting lost in the mix. So I accentuated that just a little bit to allow for a piece of veneer to sandwich in between. In order to mortise the supports into the top, again, I made a template on the Pano router. This time, counterboring into the template to allow for a guide bushing to ride in there. And that worked really well. Uh, one of the supports to have integral tenons as well, but with the way the curves came together, it really wasn't an option for assembly. So instead, I decided to do floating tenons with the domino. And that worked out pretty well for the three corners that had supports. In place of the support on the fourth corner is the stationary face of the leg vise, the top side of which is going to be mortised using a dovetail shaped tenon, and that keeps this jaw of the vise flush with the front of the bench.
and a cross lapped mortise is cut into the face of that curved leg to accept the curved jaw of the vise. As always, a little fine tuning and finessing is necessary to make for a gapless fit. There's this really awkward size of hole that needs to be cut every once in a while that's bigger than an inch and a quarter, but usually not something I have a Forstner bit for. And one of my favorite things for the Pano Router is cutting out odd sized circles with the combination of bearing sizes and bit sizes with a custom template up on the fence, you can make pretty much any size under four inches that you want. It was a little tricky trying to figure out how to get some of these components centered on a hole that was already cut and just using a little support block and making a tenon at the end of it, I was able to basically create a centering block to mount all the hardware through that hole. All right, I'm biased as hell, but that looks sick. Let's get a final level cut on the legs and we'll go ahead and make that bottom shelf so we can get everything glued together. to notice something and you guys I tried I tried to be a split top guy I wanted to like it but I just think split tops are silly I don't get them I don't need to put clamps in there I don't want it for work holding and I never want a planing stop that's 10 inches away from me since I'm using hold fast I think a strip down the center is going to be just fine for holding stuff down anywhere in the bench I cannot see any benefit to a split top long story short it's a solid top as it should be I'm sure there will be plenty of strong opinions in the comments below looking forward to reading those I know you love your clamps in the center.
it's looking pretty good for now. Obviously, so this section here is called the chop. Uh, the chop's gonna need some more shaping. First, I wanna get the floor installed while it's up here, the shelf down here, and then we can bring it down to the ground and get the tail vise installed and wrap this thing up. Let's do it. All right, for reference, definitely some room for improvement. I'm not quite sure what's wrong yet. Kind of looks like this plate is rubbing on this one. Uh, almost like this assembly needs to back off just a little bit. We'll have to revisit that. I'm not really sure what's going on there. For now, let's move on to installing this dead sexy HNT tail vise from Heartwood Tools. All right, this is the point of every project that I absolutely dread and it's where I can no longer lift anything. So I need to figure out how to get this on the ground. Well, that wasn't very dramatic. Last time I dropped a 600 pound bench on my toes. The owner of Heartwood Tools, Leslie, is a hell of a furniture maker and one of the few places that you can pick up fine handmade tools on the internet. She also writes a handwritten note with every sale, which I think is just above and beyond. If you'd like to purchase this vice or anything else on her website, I believe the only discount code in existence is listed in the description below. Check it out.
stretch. Let's go ahead and get the front face of that vise, AKA the chop. We'll get that shaped and figure out what we're doing for hold downs now that I eliminated the split top. Oh, hey, also huge thanks to everyone who supported the t-shirt drop last time. Um, I really appreciate that. Sold a ton of them and couldn't be more impressed with the quality of the tees. So I hope you guys all liked them too. Really appreciate all the support there. Thanks so much. Brand new Union Acubur Burnisher for card scrapers from Heartwood Tools. Absolute game changer, seriously. I've never been able to pull like a reliable, repeatable burr on a card scraper, but this thing, it does the trick. I think the configuration of these pop-up tail vice pegs, dogs or prairie dogs in this case, on the front of the bench will work great. Even if this was a bit of a departure from the original plan, it still looks like a split top and I've never actually seen the hold fast holes down at the center strip before. So I think this still qualifies as the Sawyer style or split top Sawyer as promised. I never liked how my hold fast reamed out my dog holes. So separating those is a big plus in my book. The spacing is dictated by the reach of the hold fast down the center and the throw of the tail vise along the front of the bench. I ended up smoothing out the leg vise action by adding some weights to the vise jaw or chop to balance out the asymmetric design. As to how well it benches, time will tell whether it's earned its place next to the Rubo. As for looks, I think it turned out pretty benching. Yeah. I may do plans for this one as I remember getting a lot of requests on the OG Rubo. So let me know if that's of interest. They'll be available in the description once I have them uploaded. Thanks to Painter Router for supplying the material for this build. If you're in the market, you've seen the versatility and it's time to pull the trigger. You won't regret it. Don't forget to sign up for Sprinkle Business Course if you wanna make money woodworking. Share this with a friend if you enjoyed the build and if you think I have earned it, I'd certainly appreciate your subscription. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.